Hello everyone, Professor Sexton here with a short video lecture on using quotations. Uh, what you'll want to do with this video is that you'll want to go into course documents and there's a document there called using quotations um, that explains information about using quotations. Um, what I'll do is I'll begin by bringing up the document so that you can see it. <clears throat> So you should be able to see the document now on my screen. It is a three page document. And let me explain something about the document before I go into this lecture. So the document is divided into two sections. One is um, actually it's divided into three sections. My apologies. Um, one is about quoting from short stories, novels and essays. Another one is about quoting from poetry. And the third one is adding and deleting words from a quotation. Since your first paper is a poetry paper, and remember that one is going to be due on March 6, uh, I'm just going to today uh, focus this lecture on talking about using poetry to quotate, to use quotations. So I'm not going to go over the part about quoting from short stories, novels, and essays. Um, when we discuss the second paper assignment, which is over a play, um, then I'll come back and I'll talk about that. So one of the things that I want to say about using quotations are, is this, quotation is a very effective way in a literary paper to provide textual evidence to support your central ideas and thesis. However, you need to be very careful with your use of quotations. You don't want to just put a quotation just to have a quotation. So there may, in the future, you may have some professors who will tell you that you all have to quote in your paper. But <clears throat> if they, if your professor tells you that, make certain that if you are using quotations, that you're using them for a reason. So you don't want to just put them in. So to that end, don't put quotations in just to state matter of fact details or to just provide plot summary. Uh, when you use quotations, you're mainly using them to illustrate and to prove your point. Uh, and also you want to engage with the quotation. So if you put the quotation in, you need to do something with it. You need to point out to your readers how this quotation forms a part of your argument, uh, how it supports a point that you make, or it could be that you provide the quotation because it's something that you disagree with. And one of the things that you'll need to think about when using quotations in this course, uh, particularly for this course, English 102. So all the papers that you're writing are papers on literature that I have already read. So you know that for the poetry paper, I've read all of those poems. And so you might think to yourself, well, I don't need to use a quotation because Professor Sexton already knows this poem. And while that is true, when I sit down to score your papers, I am not going to have that poem in front of me. So when I sit down to uh, score your poetry papers, I'm not going to go and get the poem for each time I read a paper of yours. So there's a particular line from the poem that you need to use in order to support your point, then you need to bring that line into your paper. Um, so you want to be very careful with your use of quotations. So operate from the assumption that, yes, I know the literary work that you're quoting, but operate from the assumption that I've not memorized it. So like, for instance, let's say that you're doing My Last Duchess, which is, you know, some 40, 45 uh, lines long. I don't know every line of that poem by heart. And so if you're quoting something from line 33 or 34, there's no guarantee that I know that line. So if that line is very important to your analysis, then you need to make sure that you include it. To that end, there are two ways to use quotations in your paper. One thing that you can do is you can incorporate the quotation into your own sentence, or you can use a complete sentence before the quotation. So let me show you how to do this. So you see here, this is for quoting from short stories, novels, and essays. We're not going to focus on that for this time because, as I said, your first paper is on poetry. So if you go to the second page of this document, 
you will see that there's one about quoting from poetry. So here is an example where I have taken two lines from a poem and put them into my own sentence. So the full sentence reads, the speaker ends by concluding that, open quotes, so long as men can breathe or eyes can see, forward slash, so long lives this and this gives life to thee, in quotation marks, open parentheses, line numbers, close parentheses, and periods. So let me explain how this works. See this part? The speaker ends by concluding that. That is my sentence. Those are the words that I came up with, but it's not a complete sentence. Then what I do is I incorporate the quotation into my sentence. Uh, and so I put the quotation marks to let the reader knows that this is a quotation. Notice that when you read this together, it reads as a complete sentence. So that's the thing that you want to make sure that you do. Some stylistic things is use a forward slash to indicate line breaks. So that lets the reader know that this is line 13. What comes after the forward slash is line 14. And notice that at the end of the quotation, this is called a parenthetical citation. What a parenthetical citation does is it lets the reader knows what line numbers this quote comes from. So th this is line 13 and 14. That is all you need, 13-14, close parentheses and periods. Under here is the explanation. The next thing is you can use a complete sentence before the quotation. So look at this example. The speaker emphasizes that his father also worked on days of rest. That's a complete sentence, and it's my sentence used to incorporate to introduce a quotation. Put a colon, open quotation marks, and then give the line from the poem. This time the line is Sundays to my father got up early, in quotations, open parentheses, one, close parentheses, period. So notice here that you have the complete sentence. When you have a complete sentence, you put a colon after the complete sentence then give the quotation marks, and then once again, you have the parenthetical citation that lets the reader know that this is from line one. Here's the explanation. Last, if you need to quote four lines or more to explain a point that you're making, then the format changes and you use, it, you use something called block formation. So instead of incorporating the quotation into the actual text, what you do is you space and start the quotation on a separate line. So here, notice that this reads, the poem ends with the speaker commenting upon the amount of time that has transpired since her death, colon, start a new line, since then till centuries and yet, and this is the line from this poem. Each line is a separate line. So this is line 21, 22, 23, 24. Notice that in this situation, there's no quotation marks around the actual quote. Let me just, and I'm gonna stop sharing this for a moment. Let me just give you a caution about overusing quotations. Yes, it is good to use quotations in your paper. Uh, it does help to prove your point. However, you want to avoid overusing quotations and quoting unnecessarily. Um, and I think oftentimes as writers, we sometimes overquote, um, And so we put in way more than we need. Like for instance, in, if that, and in that last example that I gave of the four lines from that poem, if my analysis or explanation only deals with the first two lines of that, then I don't need those last two lines. I only need lines 21 and 22. So only quote the lines that you are going to use. And also, don't begin a poetry paper by giving the entire poem at the very beginning of the uh, paper. That's totally unnecessary. Um, so if you're doing my papa's waltz, don't start by quoting that entire poem. You don't need to do that. Uh, it, there's no need to do that only quote the lines that you use. Also, what I want to reiterate is this. If you quote from a literary work, you need to do something with those quoted lines. So you cannot just put them in and then move on to your next point. So if you quote, like for instance, that one about Sundays too, my father got up early, 
then there needs to be an explanation why you feel that it is, that it's important. And you go in, you say something like, Sundays are typically a day of rest. And what this poem emphasizes is that when the father gets up to on Sunday, that shows that this father gets no day of rest. And in your explanation, you want to keep referring back to the line that you have quoted. So you, you really want to make sure that you're getting the most value out of that quoted line that you give. Um, for the paper assignments that I give in this course, I'm never going to make part of the grade. I'm never going to say on the paper assignment that you have to quote. I, I won't ever do that. Um, however, using quotations will make your paper stronger and using quotations will most likely result in you getting a higher grade. Now, there are some times that people can summarize and not use quotations and do, do a terrific job. Um, so you need to kind of think about that. Um, but as I'm grading your papers, what I'll be looking for, I'll be looking for proof. And so if you tell me something, but there's no evidence of it, then one of my comments is, okay, you've told me this, but where in the poem does, where in the poem do you get this? How, how, how do you come to this? And that's when you're using the lines from the poem to emphasize your point. So that is about using quotations. Um, once again, as I said, with all these video lectures, in addition to listening to the video lectures, you need to also read the documents. If you have any questions about this, uh, feel free to email me. All right, everyone, hope you're doing well, and I will see you in the next video lecture. Bye.